Well, I was a professor at the University of Florida in the health science area. I was teaching in the public school and I was selected to do an NSF training program in math education. And like a lot of women my age, I was counseled out of math and science. And because you're not going to need that. And I got into it and I found this is fabulous. This is exciting. This is interesting. And that opened up an entire world to me. The opportunity that was given to me by doing the NSF training program and going in and learning basic mathematics and learning how to translate that into applications was an extraordinary, it opened my eyes and gave me a level of confidence I wouldn't have had and I've always been very grateful for that experience. And I began then to build a career track, did a PhD, did some, some on my own kinds of postdocs that built the kind of background so that I could pursue a research career. And uh, there was a lot of hard work and there were plenty of glass ceilings. But then when the opportunity came to, the, uh, to come to the University of Florida, then I began to see that you could just build collaborations and build programs that were of extreme interest. I had joined the faculty at UF in 1999, coming as a, as a full professor from the University of Iowa. I was a part of that sort of front wave of women that were looking at, I think I can, I think I can do it all. I think I can have a career and I think I can have a family too. As my last task, I had a large NIH grant and we were looking at health disparities, particularly in relationship to head and neck cancer. When I was very young, the only vacation I recall we ever took, my dad loaded us up. My brother was a very small child at that time, infant I would say. And we drove from the farm to St. Louis, Missouri. And we saw the Brooklyn Dodgers and the St. Louis Cardinals play a weekend series. And I was captured. I saw Jackie Robinson play, I saw Roy Campanello play, I saw um, um, Don Newcomb pitch, and I saw Stan Musial hit a home run. And that experience was implanted in my head. Never gave up my love for baseball. And then um, careers get in the way of doing all the things, but when I traveled, I always managed to get to a, a ballpark in the convention city and sneak off and go see a baseball game if it was the right time of the year. I've always been a baseball fan. And I'm really, my husband says I'm a fanatic, not just a fan, a fanatic fan. Some people say the game is slow and I just find the mathematics and the physics behind it to be just fantastic. And I'm a real nerd about it. I've had the opportunity as president of the Gator Dugout Club to meet the people in the booster club and certainly the coaches and we once a year get to have a dinner with the players and it's it's great fun. The metrics that are used in baseball now are fascinating and at our dinner last Wednesday night I got to sit with a couple of the baseball pitchers and we talked about how they use all of these metrics, the, the uh, angles, the momentum, the spin rates to improve their own game and how in the final analysis it comes down to just how does it feel. My dad said, to, uh, somebody asked him is, why do you think your daughter was so accomplished? And he said, well, I'm sure it's pretty, it's because some man told her she couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's probably true.